Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to Strange Mind 6. I'm your host, Ruby, and today we're going to be getting back into the book of Superstitions, a handbook of folklore, myths, and legends from around the world by D.R. McElroy. But before we begin, I would like to say thank you for all the views, the likes, the subscriptions. I want to say I am personally very, very thankful. And without further ado, grab a snack, grab a drink, or sit back and relax. And let's get to this, shall we? Western European Curious Creatures Norse influences are widely spread through Western Europe and many of these creatures derive from the mythology. Gamusino, Spain The equivalent of the English snipe hunt, hunting for the elusive Gamusino, is a joke that is played on the naive and uninitiated members of a group. The novice are sent into the woods with instructions to bring back one of the mysterious creatures. Descriptions are typically wild and conflicting, and practical advice for capturing the creatures is usually non-existent. Kitty, greedy, and freaky, ravenous, Norse. These are the faithful wolf companions of Odin. Glass Gabinhain Norse Glass, used with various other spellings, is a fabulous cow belonging to the goddess Boan, which gives unlimited quantities of milk, such that the rivers run with it. Holdenfolk Iceland. The invincible fairy folk of Iceland. These are tiny elves, trolls, and fairies who live in the rocks and woods of the island. They don't like civilization and they are grumpy when disturbed. Custom dictates that the house should be thoroughly cleaned before Christmas Day, and one should leave a small offering of food out for the Holden folk. On New Year's Day, the creatures migrate, as Icelanders light candles to help them find their way in the dark. Leprechaun, Ireland From the Irish word, Lobarinsin, small-bodied men. These little men, in green, are solitary members of the Fae, the fairy folk of Ireland. If you can capture one, he will grant you three wishes in exchange for his freedom. You can catch one by pinning it with your gaze, but don't blink. He will disappear the moment you do. Leprechauns make their living mending shoes, and they are obviously quite good at it, since they are known to have a pot of gold which you can find if you can discover the end of a rainbow. Mora Encantada, Portugal Moara is the enchanted mermaid who will make you rich if you can break the spell that binds her and sets her free. Unfortunately, there are no details that explains who set the curse or how to break it. A moara can be recognized by her long, beautiful hair and comb of gold. Moonin, also Hugin. Norse, these were the sacred ravens of Odin, ever present on his shoulder. They acted as messengers and spies for the god. Nissi, Denmark The famous gnomes of Danish mythology, Nissi are dwarf-like men who wear 
conical red caps and live in the lofts of barns. Before the adoption of Julmanden, the Swedish, Swedish, the Danish Santa Claus, gnomes who were happy with their living arrangements would bring gifts to the children of homeowners on Christmas Day. The little guys have since become famous in the entertainment and advertising industries. I might butcher this name, I'm so sorry. Sehirimnir Norse is a magical animal generally considered to be a boar, belonging to Odin. It is slaughtered and eaten each night, then reborn again every day. Slipnir Norse Slipnir is the powerful eight-legged steed of Odin who helps make the god invincible in battle. Slipnir is a son of Loki, god of mischief. The horse never tires, and it can transport Odin over land, sea, and through the air. He can even travel to the underworld, Helheim. Talimaja Sweden Talimaja is a beautiful troll girl with a tail like a cow. She will try to convince a good man to marry her in a proper Christian church. If she succeeds, she will lose her tail and become human. Unfortunately for her husband, she also loses her beauty. Western European Mythical Monsters some of the most iconic monsters in mythology come from Western Europe. Many of these were acquired during conquest and would gain lasting fame via their use of heraldic emblems and coat of arms. Banshee, Celtic, especially Irish. These wailing announcers of doom and death are the spirits of spirits or ghosts of dead women whose sole purpose is to frighten and disturb the populace hearing the cry of a banshee means that death is near basilis europe likely greece this is a fearsome chimera usually possessing the head body and feet of a rooster the wings of a bat and the tail of a snake. Sometimes other animals' parts are included. Basilis is said to be born from an egg that was laid by a rooster and incubated by a toad. It is so hideously poisonous that any creature even approaching it will die including birds flying overhead. Even a look from it can kill you. Basilisks are blamed for everything, from plague outbreaks to crop failures. Black Shuck, England. Black Shuck is a ghost dog that roams the moors of England. It is black furred and shaggy, with green or red glowing eyes from which a look can kill, though it might take you a year to die. This legend is likely the inspiration for Conan Doyle's Hound of the Baskerville's Tale. Fear lieth. Also, am fear lieth more. Scotland. Essentially a Scottish Bigfoot, this creature is said to be 10 feet 3 meters tall and only reveals its presence by the extreme feeling of dread that it causes when it is nearby. It lives at the top of the second highest mountain in Scotland, Ben Macdui. Fenrir, 
Norse, the fiercest monster of North, Norse mythology, Fenrir is a gigantic wolf trapped among the roots of the world tree Yggdrasil. When Ragnarok comes, Fenrir will escape from the roots and slaughter mankind, as well as eat the Allfather, Odin. Fomorians These are a race of evil and ugly giants who ruled their conquered peoples through violence and oppression. They demanded exorbitant tributes in the form of two thirds of all household goods and two thirds of all children born. They are the historical enemies of the Tuatha de Danann and were finally defeated by Luch, who killed their king Balor. Genganger, Norway. These are the ghosts of those who died with unfinished business, who committed undead, or who were murdered. These spirits are deeply disturbed and cannot rest, committing violence against the living and generally wreaking havoc. They are compared to a poltergeist, a German spirit or ghost that makes noises and moves or tosses things around in rooms. Poltergeist is German for noisy ghost. Kelpie, Scotland. Shaped like a horse, the Kelpie looks benign. It is, however, a deadly water monster that lures its human victims to ride upon its back, then plunges to the depths of the lake or river, where it drowns and eats the helpless person. It can shapeshift to other forms in an attempt to fool its victims. In Ireland, it is called a Fuca or Puca. The Loch Ness Monster is sometimes shown as a Kelpie, meaning water horse in Scots Gaelic. Nuburo, Austria, Northwest Spain. Nuburo, various spellings, is a dark-skinned dwarfish creature who wears goat skins and a big hat. He drives a chariot pulled by wolves, and he can control the weather, turning it from pleasant to dark and stormy. He is capable of destroying crops, but can also be helpful. He typically has wings and an eye patch. Ojancanu, Contabria, Spain. Ojancanu is a pre-Christian monster and a cyclops giant known for his cruelty and ruthless ways. His wife, Ojakana, is said to be even more brutal than he. She would kill her own children. The Basque people have a similar creature named Tartalo, spelling varies. Peru Finland. Peru are evil spirits who live in forests and entrap and confuse people who walk through. They are subjects of the devil god Lempo and do his bidding. Tarselwum, Bavaria. Tarselwum was a dragon of the Alps, sometimes described as a medium-sized reptile, about seven to ten feet, two to three meters, in length, with the head of a cat. Worms generally have just two front legs and no back legs, and stolen can be translated as 
stubby feet. It may have poisonous breath or cat-like fangs and can inject venom. It emits cat-like yowls, hisses, or growls, or it may whistle. It is considered dangerous to humans. Trascul Galicia Northern Spain One of any number of house spirits, like the domovoi, that live in human houses, trascu, spelling varies, are often mischievous and irascible. They are typically described as tiny men or goblins dressed in red, with red pointy hats, like gnomes from elsewhere. They frequently limp on their spindly legs and may sport a hole in the left hands. Other descriptions have them wearing brown or black, bearing sheep ears and goat horns. They are generally responsible for various household annoyances such as broken glass, missing or misplaced objects, and creaky stairs. Oh, that might mean that I have one there. They can be mollified by small offerings of food and thread, and they may even do some household chores at night if they are happy. Getting rid of them means giving them an impossible task, such as turning a black sheep white. When hoping their failure to accomplish it will embarrass them enough that they won't return. Wolpertinger, Germany. This creature is a chimera made up of various different animal parts, and it is typically fanged and winged. It has a great many similarities with the American jackalope, particularly its penchant for hanging around taxidermy shops. And with that, my dear friends, well, let's see. We can continue. Western European superstitions. Friday the 13th is a feared date that isn't unique to Western Europe. Many cultures believe that uneven numbers are unlucky, including China, Japan, and the U.S. What is unique to Western Europe is the specific of Friday the 13th. The fear is believed to have originated with the fall of the Knights Templar a highly respected group of former crusaders known for their righteousness and sense of duty king philip the fourth of france needed money to fund his ambitions and he knew that the templars allegedly held vast stores of gold from the holy land he was also deeply in debt to them. On Friday, October 13, 1307, a coordinated mass attack on Templar holdings in France was carried out. The Templars were arrested and all of their goods confiscated. Templars outside of France escaped this fate, but Philip had forced the hand of Pope Clement V and the order of the Knights of Templar was eventually dissolved. Saying bless you when someone sneezes, the relatively dense populations of Western Europe allowed for the scourge of plague and spread fairly easily. Several mass epidemics of the dreaded disease erased huge numbers of people. The worst of all was the Black Death, also the Black Plague. 
which spread from Asia to Europe in the fall of 1347. By the time it was over, three years later, approximately one-third of the entire population of Europe was dead. The custom of saying bless you to anyone who sneezes is a desperate attempt to invoke the Almighty to stop the spread of disease. Crossing your fingers for luck. This practice may have arisen with the longbow archers of England during the Hundred Years' War with France. Allegedly, the bowmen would cross their fingers as they pulled back the bowstrings, making the secret sign of the cross was believed to help bring God's focus to their aim. The archers devastated the army of France at the Battle of Crecy in 1346 and at Agincourt in 1415, in which the French were estimated to have lost 8,000 men to England's 100. Ultimately, the French won the war, but the longbowmen changed the face of the battle forever. Hurting or killing a cat is bad luck. While many cultures around the world believe that black cats are unlucky, this prohibits, prohibits against harming all cats from Germany. The famous Black Forest of Bavaria is home to many witches and assorted unsavory monsters in German folklore. As witches are known to keep cats as familiars, it would not do you good to make the witch angry by hurting her pet. Killing spiders is also considered bad luck for the same reason. Seeing an old woman, first thing in the morning is bad luck. Seeing a young woman is good luck. The Germans have a great number of concerning old women, many of which have the reverse effect if a young woman is involved. Again, witches. An itchy palm means money will come to you soon. This superstition actually spread from African slaves. A Nigerian belief says that an itchy right palm means you will receive money, while an itchy left palm means you will lose money. Don't walk open. Don't walk under an open ladder. This superstition has an interesting source. It seems that the open ladder forms a triangle a shape known to be especially magical. Walking under the ladder breaks the magical shape and perhaps upsets the various spirits living there, disturbing the symmetry and bringing bad luck. In some traditions, it can even kill you. Breaking a mirror is seven years bad luck. Not only are mirrors extremely expensive historically, but some cultures believe that the mirror actually captures the soul of the viewer. Breaking the mirror kills the soul, and the viewer will inevitably die. This same belief still exists in the dislike of being photographed that is prevalent in some cultures. The reason for it being seven years is that this has long been a magical number in many traditions, including Christianity. A horseshoe is good luck. Horses are extremely important to nomadic peoples across the world. Owning a horse is often a sign of wealth, and possessing anything associated with or showing a picture of a horse increases your chances of gaining wealth. Be sure to hang your horseshoe over the front door with the ends facing up. Doing so keeps the good luck from draining out of the horseshoe. Swimming in freezing cold water on the first day of the new year 
brings good health for the entire year. This belief has since morphed into a worldwide phenomenon of polar bear plunging. Rather than being for health benefits, the current fad is more about how cold the water is and how long the swimmers can stay in it. The Netherlands Carrying the bride over the threshold is good luck. This ancient superstition stems from the belief in house spirits. If the bride were to stumble while entering her new home, evil spirits could catch her unprepared and enter her body, causing difficult childbirths or even sterility. Carrying the bride through this dangerous passage avoids this. If a virgin wants to know whether she'll marry in the coming year, she should knock on a chicken coop at midnight on Christmas Eve. If a rooster squawks, she will marry. If a hen squawks, she won't. Germany If a young woman walks backwards into a garden on Midsummer's Eve, the summer solstice, and picks a rose, she can discover who she will marry. The rose must be carefully placed into a paper bag and stored in a dark drawer until Christmas Eve. On Christmas Day, the rose is removed from the bag and worn in the decolletage to church. The man who asks for the rose, or who takes it without asking, will be her future groom, England. To prevent goblins from substituting changelings for your child, lay a pair of men's pants over the cradle. Germany The corpse of a murdered person will bleed if it is touched by the person who killed it. In times past, touching the corpse was a way of proving guilt or innocence of having committed the, cr the crime slash murder. Thankfully, this trial is no longer practice. England and we are going to end it here, my dear friends, because this is a new chapter of Australia and Oceania. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, may you have a beautiful morning, afternoon, evening, or night, whenever this video reaches you. And as always, this has been Ruby, signing off.